Okay, F15 radar and armament systems overview. Let's go down to the radar panel first. Here we go. Um, right, this switch here is controls the radar. It's all off, standby, operate, and emergency. Um, you'd normally leave it in operate. If it's on standby, you can still your radar does sort of kind of see targets. Um, but it doesn't transmit. Now, the radar itself is, is the world's most perfect radar. It doesn't accurately simulate the radar fitted to the F-15, partly because the documentation is somewhat classified. So we've just had to do something that's pretty perfect, which is the best radar that everyone wishes they could make but didn't. You can't see through terrain. You can see targets based on their radar cross-section, RCS and distance. This button would be the elevation, and I have no idea what that button is. Um, this one, no idea. This one, no idea. Well, it's a mode, but I don't know what the modes are. They're not documented. Frame store, I may implement at some point. You've got a, a basic frame store on the radar, so you can hold a position of a sort of radar image, and then you can use it to compare to see where the targets are going. Right, so the other thing is, oh, we can't see anything, let's turn the consoles up a bit and let's have some aircraft lights. It is only dawn. Um, morning caution, yeah. Windshield heat, we'll turn that down for a minute. We don't want to set the damn thing on fire. Um, this is your IFF panel. Normally you'd have that there, that there, and mode 4 turned on. Uh, that's just to ensure that your sort of friends in the squadron don't accidentally shoot you. Well, here you are delightfully referred to as friendly fire. So, um, next step now is to, let's have some, some chaps to play with. So we go down here, I'm using the Operation Red Flag, or OPRF, um, moving targets demo to get tar to get something to play with as it were. Uh, you'll see that we've got some targets visible on two, so let's just wink the radar range out a bit, out, shift E and shift R to adjust the radar range. Um, can we unoperate? Let's see what I mean. Operate. Needs to be an operate. So, yeah, so the targets have now come up on the HUD. We're just going to do Y to select a target, and we're going to turn the master arm on. Let's have a look at this while we do this. Zoom in. This is your multi purpose colour display. Um, very useful for seeing um, your loadout. You can see here we've got SRM, which is a short range missile, i.e., uh, AIM-9 Sidewinder, MRM, which is a uh, AIM-120 AMRAM or a AIM-7 Sparrow. Don't know why anybody uses a Sparrow. I can't find a good reason for it. Um, I just use the AMRAM, which is the only missile you're ever going to need. Um, it's got a longer range, and it works almost as close in. Let's turn the throttle down using up loads of fuel here. So we'll go and reload this set. Now there are various loadouts you can have um, which which are based on the documentation in a manual standard compact. You see I've got the AIM-7s. So I don't want those. So I'll have an offensive counter air. External wind tanks. I don't actually want those because they're just going to make me too heavy for this. Actually no, let's have them. I'll probably burn loads of fuel on the afterburner while I'm doing this demonstration. If you're um, engaged with some fellow chaps who you sort of real life people on multiplayer who you've agreed to combat with you can turn this on now the current system on the aircraft uses multiplayer chat messages to sort of announce missiles which is quite unfriendly and, and not very pleasant for every you know all the civil people um, who don't want to see that we're engaged in sort of combat operations a uh, future version of the OPRF aircraft will have uh, will, will use emissary to do this, so you'll be able to. You won't need to turn this on. Uh, well, you'll need to turn it on to engage, but nobody else is going to see the messages, which will be an improvement. So we can fly around and, and uh, engage each other without upsetting um, everyone else. Okay. VSD. Now on the top of this is the currently the selected target. It's, it's airspeed, it's relative aspect, uh, which is a two digit degrees, i.e. degrees divided by 10, left or right. It's airspeed, it's altitude, 
then this is the radar range. This is the closing rate, which is the radar closing rate, which is a geometric thing. It's not your difference in airspeed. It's based on the, the way the returns come in, the angle to the target. Um, on the bottom line, we've got G0, which is your ground speed, T0, which is your true airspeed, 339, which is your bearing to the target, um, 77.1, which is your range, the call sign, which is abbreviated the first five or six char five characters, and the aircraft type. Because these are AI targets, we don't actually see the aircraft type. It doesn't know them. On over here, this is the twos display, which is really the F-15s radar warning system, but it's a lot more than that. It's way more clever and a lot more classified. It uses um, data from sensors on the wing tips underneath the body and all over the place to pick up any sort of electromagnetic em emissions from the sort of aircraft in the zone. It will also receive data from other aircraft, you know, AWACS aircraft, so you've got a, an overview. As I said, very classified, don't know how it works. Um, I do know that the distance to the, from the target to the sort of cross and the centre should be its threat level. Don't simulate threat level, so it is effectively just the distance because they're all at the same threat level. So you can sort of use it as a mini moving map, effectively, to see where everyone is. That's probably going to change once we get threat level simulated. Now, on the HUD, we have the call sign we've currently selected, the range, the closure again, and the type. This here is your IFF transponder. Um, set it to something that isn't 1200 is, is probably a good idea. Um, when we've got mode 4 simulated, it will be quite important because that will relate to the shape of the targets on the two displays, so you'll know whether it's a friend or foe. Okay, enough said about that. So, we've got that well, you can also so I've got this you can also do a very specific loadout from that um, some from here from equipment fuel and payload you can put whatever you want based on what the pilot can carry so this one can have it so you can have all aim on 20s you can't have all sparrows because they only fit on certain body stations and equally you can't go and put a missile on a pylon that's only designed for a drop tank so I'm quite happy with that so let's turn the brakes off we're going to do a I said off just turn them back on idiot off we go, full afterburner. Um, you can toggle. Oh, hang on, let's just abort this. I just wanted to show you something that. It'll abort take off. Uh, right, on the throttle here. Now, you're not actually probably ever going to use this switch, but this switch here controls the currently active armament guns. Gun, I can't, I don't know, I can't remember the position, so I have to look at the HUD. So, what's that? That is. So, all the way forward is. Uh, medium range missiles now all the way backwards forwards backwards I don't know whether that is forwards then sidewinders and then gun so we'll leave it on MRM go back up zoom out and let's actually do our take off this time so we can get in the air without um, without being aborting out so a full afterburner get back onto the centre line I haven't checked my weight and balance so I'm just going to rotate at about about 160 here we go yeah, we'll start flying. Okay, don't look, don't pitch up too much. Gear in. So, okay. Which well, I want to get sort of stabilised. I will pick a target. I'm going to go for one of this bunch here. Okay, they've got a very fast target. I don't actually want that one. So what else have we got? So just trim out. Um, I'm going to put the autopilot on for a minute while I choose a target. So which one have we got? Let's have fast high target. Okay, so I've done turn the autopilot off. Master caution all comes on when the autopilot's disconnected, just so you know. Um, always turn your master caution off because otherwise you'll never know when a new warning is coming if you miss her same warning. Okay, so we've now got this this is it this target's within range. Now on the top right of the HUD, occupying half of it, is the DLZ. Now this has got a number of different um, things. The arrow at the top is the maximum aerodynamic range of the missile, which you're possibly not going to achieve. So the, the sort of box underneath it is the, um, the box of sort of the line. So you go from the top. Hang on, I'll just trim this. I'll slow down a bit because we're getting on very quickly. I'll do some pointing. 
Right, so this bit here is Max Mayo. This is your um, prob prob um, probable intercept line, I think they call it, RPI. This is your range of the target, assuming the target evades. This is all down to what the missile can do. And the bottom line is minimum range. So in an ideal situation, you'd want to um, shoot your missile at the uh, at your friend for training purposes or whatever you're engaged in at the 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 second line. If I shoot it now it may hit him. So let's go and give it a go. So we've launched the missile, off it goes. Fox away. Um, I'm now gonna come in closer to him. Full power. No I didn't want to put the flaps out, that's not a good thing to do. You have to excuse my poor piloting here. Suffering with a fairly poor joystick. How much joy gain in my map? It is fast and high. Okay, so that actually engaged him correctly. That engaged him. The missile was exploded 9.8 metres away from him, so that was quite successful. Let's now go and switch to sidewinders and get a closer. Whilst not losing him. I think I've got some really bad trim. Right, a poorly trimmed out aircraft is not a good thing. So we're closing in at 73 knots. We need to go off a bit higher. So we keep him at the bottom of the hard while we climb. He's at 36,000 feet. I think we should be at 36,000 feet at least. Um, again, I'm, I'm climbing here. I'm not particularly going too nose high because I'll never be able to get the nose down without pulling um, quite a lot of either positive or negative G. So I'm just going to gently let the nose fall when we get down to get to our target altitude and then we should close on him quite quickly. And he's moving so we move. But this at the moment the side one is not it's not within range even though we're 9.1 nautical miles away from him. Okay now the side one is in range. You get the DLZ again. You can see that the boxes have got bigger that's because we're higher up. And so the theoretical aerodynamic range isn't changing, but the other two are. So we're going to close in on them a bit more. Um, right. Just really to get that um, that range down. Almost could be able to see him. So what we're doing now, Mat 1.4, we should start gaining on him quite quickly, shortly. Oh, if you're slight pause in the voiceover whilst I was thinking there, I'm just going to trim it to this sort of, so we can hold this gentle turn. And then we're going to launch it now. So that should be a successful missile, hopefully, because it was fired in the box. Yeah, 3.6 metres. He's in serious trouble now. Let's have another one for good luck. Yeah. So the, there you go. That's really... Oh, God, my windstone's got foggy. Hang on. Can't see where I'm going, it's got too cold. So turn the windscreen heat on. Turn back into the s oh, oh. Oh. Yes, we're going fast. Don't pull back on the stick too much. Now we could go and I could go and demonstrate how to engage someone with guns. Um but it takes quite a lot of time to get close enough, so I'm not gonna bore you with that on this video. Uh, that's all there is really to it. That is armament missiles and radar on the F fifteen. As usual, comments below. Um, I will accept emails, obviously, and um, submissions by carrier pigeon. That didn't turn out too well to the state of my roof and what pigeons usually do. Um, so now, if you want to send me anything else, send it as a message in a bottle. Thank you.